Hey everyone, we're back. We got another install for you. What we're going to be doing on this 88 YJ Wrangler, we're going to install Yukon's zip lockers. We're going to install them in the rear as well as the front. We've also got uh, master rebuild kits. So that way while we've got everything torn apart, we can put new bearings, we can put new seals in there. And that way everything is good, fresh, new. And then we're going to top things off with the Lucas heavy duty gear oil. So. Follow along, we'll show you how the process goes step by step. All right, first things first. What we need to do, we're gonna do one axle at a time. So we're gonna start draining the gear oil out of the rear diff. We're gonna get this thing up on jack stands, get the wheels and tires removed, start the process of removing the axle shafts out of both sides so we can get in there, access that carrier, pull the whole center unit out and we're going to start replacing our seals and bearings while we're in there. So that's what we're going to do first. All right, so what we've got going now, as you can see, we've got the wheels and tires removed. We've got the rear diff cover taken off. We're letting the fluid drain now. Since we're going to be reusing this same ring gear, at this point we don't need to remove the drive line and we shouldn't have to remove the pinion gear. All right, what we need to do, we're going to take these drums off, take the drums off on both sides. And as you can see, this one's coming off pretty good. Sometimes you need to use a mallet, rubber mallet, kind of help it along. All right, the nice thing with this, if you see this outer portion of the axle shaft here where the lugs are, there's a large hole in it. If you have the transmission in neutral, you can just spin the axle shaft around by turning the drive line, you can turn this right here, but what it'll do, it will line up so you can get an impact socket through there to access that nut. Now there's four of these nuts under here. We've already loosened it up. This is the last one. And once that nut's off of there, that axle shaft simply slides right out like that. So it's really not a hard process, but that's how you do it. Uh, again, four nuts, very simple. All right, now we showed you how that comes off with just removing those four nuts. From there, it's simply a matter of sliding that axle shaft out. Now, since we've got a master rebuild kit, what we're going to do, we're going to clean all of this up. We're going to pull the bearing, this seal, everything off of there, and we're going to replace it. We'll press new ones on there, but this will be clean, new bearings, new seals, once we get ready to put it back into the axle housing. Now this okay, again, we've got the axle shaft out. Now, while we have it out, it's a great time to inspect any brake components, uh, your races, your seals. It, it's good to just clean things up, make sure everything is as you want it, replace what needs to be replaced. When I pull something apart, you got a project like this where you got a lot of nuts and bolts that are gonna be rolling around instead of dumping them all into one bucket trying to figure out where they go later. I just put them back into place where they came out of. Saves a bunch of time. Uh, that way you're not mixing and matching bolts and uh, creating further headache. Okay, now we've got both axle shafts out. We need to remove these four carrier bolts. That way we can pull the whole spool out of there. So that's going to be our next process. Okay, now we've got this cap removed. This cap is loose. You want to make sure that you keep track of everything. You want the orientation of both caps. You want this cap to go back on that side. Same with this one. Anything that comes out of there, it's critical that the shims, anything go back into the same position. And what that's going to do, that is going to help with the gear mesh when we put the new locker in to ensure that everything is still spaced correctly. So again, when you're pulling this out, just be very careful, be very cognizant of what comes out, where it goes. We're going to clean the inside of this thing up. You want to inspect everything, give it a, get it a good visual inspection, clean everything up. We're going to prep the parts to get ready to go back in. Okay, now that we've got the spool removed, we just have to remove the ring gear by loosening and removing these bolts. We'll transfer the ring gear over to the new Yukon zip locker, get ready for the install. Now that we've got the ring gear removed from the old spool, what we have to do is get a measurement before we put the ring gear on the new locker. So what we've done, we've put the race back on the bearing. We've got it sitting on a good solid surface. Now we need to get a measurement from the outside of that race to the flat side, the mounting side, 
of where this ring gear was. So we've got a set of calipers and not a difficult task taking a measurement from this fashion and that lets us know that we're just under two and a half inches worth of uh, space right there. So once we push the bearing on here, the cap on here, we'll get a measurement and we'll figure out what we're going to need for shims to set that backlash. So important stuff, make sure you get that done. It's good to have a set of calipers. Again, a solid base here to set things down. There's a couple different ways you could probably do it. This worked well for us. Okay, now we've got our bearing pressed on and we have our race here. But because this race sits inside, I don't know if you can see that or not, but right here, the actual bearing sticks out farther than the race. So what we've had to do is take this master shim and we'll put it on here, set it down, and we'll do like we did before with the old spool. What we'll do is get our measurement from this mounting surface down to the outside of, of where that master shim is. So that, with a little bit of math work, will tell us how much we need as far as uh, shims go. Okay, now we've got uh, everything in there. We've got the shims in both sides, the uh, bearing caps on there. We've got a pretty good initial backlash. So what we'll do now at this point, we will paint some of these gears up, spin the drive line, and uh, see how things line up how we look on the drive as well as the coast side. Maybe we'll get lucky, have things as we want it. What we'll need to do from there, we'll just pull everything back out. And we have some O-rings in here for the airline to actuate the lockers. But uh, initially for the first uh, install, first setup right there, it's feeling pretty good, so we're liking it. Okay, now that we've got this back in, we're gonna use some of this Prussian blue to mark our gears. At the same time, what I'm gonna do, we drilled out and tapped the top of the housing here for the airline to go through. So now that we've got these carrier bolts and the saddle in place, I'm gonna kind of run the airline so we know where it's gonna come out through the top of the housing so we can uh, put our airlines and our fittings up there. So now we're gonna, uh, again, mark these gears, test them, see how our pattern is. Okay, you might be able to see, we've actually got the, uh, the gears painted. What I'm going to do is go underneath, I've got the transmission in neutral. I'm going to spin the pinion so we can make contact on the coast as well as the drive side. Now we'll go back to the other side, check our pattern. Okay, so we've We've checked our backlash, our gear mesh and pattern. It looks good. We're satisfied with it. It's, uh, it's setting right where we want it to on the drive side as well as the coast side. We're happy. So now what we're going to do, we will again run this airline up and out of the way so it's not going to connect or contact with any of the ring gear. And then we'll feed it up through the uh, earlier drilled and tapped hole. And then we'll put the airlines, the fittings, all of that on there. Now you want to be real easy while you're moving this copper line around so it doesn't break anywhere around this seal housing. And as you can see how we've got this run here, you want to make sure it doesn't make any contact with the bearing cap, any of the locker itself, anything in the ring. Obviously it's not going to hit the pinion, but uh, you want to make sure that it's this copper line is well out of the way of contacting anything so you don't have it winding up and damaging any parts or your locker. Okay, now that we've got the copper tube run through the bulkhead fitting, there's gonna be an O-ring here that needs to slide over the copper tubing. We cut a piece of the airline. It needs to be inserted into the fitting here. Now that we've got the O-ring on the bulkhead fitting, this will slide over the copper tube. We will tighten it down roughly 22-25 inch pounds and then we will pull this piece out and when we're, when we're ready we can insert the new full-length airline. Alright, we've got the locker in, 
Our gear mesh, preload, backlash, everything is great. We have run the copper line, now we get to put the axles back in. So we'll put the axle shafts back in, put the drums back on, the wheels and tires, and then we'll put the diff cover on. We've still got the front to do, so we're not quite ready to do the airline and the compressor and all of that yet, but now that we've got the installation complete, we feel confident and comfortable enough that we can button it up. We'll get ready to move to the front, but for now we can wrap up the back end, get this thing back on the ground. Okay, I've got the uh, wheel bearings greased up real good. Gonna go ahead and dump a little bit on the race, and then we can get this axle put back in. Now is a great time if you've got any uh, seals leaking or if you get a master rebuild kit, swap everything out. It wasn't that long ago that we had this apart, so seals, races, bearings, all that stuff are new, but the, uh, we do have a seal out on the other side, so we're going to swap that out while we've got it apart. Step. Now that we've got the wheels and tires on, we just need to put the rear differential cover on, put the uh, gear oil in, and then what we'll do is run this a little bit, make sure everything sounds fine, is operating the way we want to, but already a big difference without the uh, spool in there. It's working like we want it to. Again, we're just going to put the gear oil in, test it out, and make sure we got it the way we want it. All right, last step. Now that we've got everything in place in order, we just have to put the rear diff on add our uh, gear oil to it and then we can test this thing out special thanks goes out to yukon this is the third jeep in the recent months that we've done either gearing hubs lockers something of that nature on i have not had a single problem with any of the yukon products or parts that we've used great stuff so again a special thanks goes out to yukon let's take this thing out and get her on the road